Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting mini PC from a company known as Azul. Now, I've actually taken a look at some of their x86 powered machines in the past, but what we have here is the new Azul Ally. As far as I can tell, this is the second generation Ally. I wasn't able to get my hands on the first, but what makes this a bit different from their other mini PCs is we're not using an x86 CPU, nor is this running a Windows operating system. We've got an ARM-based SoC, it's actually the Snapdragon 665, and right out of the box, this is running Android. Along with the Ally, the only other thing we got in here was a 15 watt power supply, and I do think that this is kind of a pre-production model. I was able to get my hands on one a little early, but it's pretty cool to see a Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU in one of these mini Android PCs, because you know if you're into these or Android TV boxes in general, you know they're usually powered by either an All Winner, an AmLogic, or a Rock Chip CPU. I personally haven't seen any of these with Snapdragon CPUs yet. Some of you out there might be familiar with the Azul brand, but they're really known for making x86 mini PCs, like the Byte 4, the Byte 4 Elite, and even the Access 4, which is an x86 Windows-based PC stick. I did a review on this and the Byte 4. Personally, love the Access 4, but now they're offering an ARM-based solution known as the Ally, and we've got that Qualcomm CPU. Taking a look at the I.O. on the Ally, over here on this side we have three USB 3.0 ports and a micro SD card slot. Moving around back, we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C, dual full-size HDMI, gigabit Ethernet, and our power in. Now when it comes to the specs of the new Ally, for the CPU, we've got the Snapdragon 665. It's an 8-core ARM SoC. We've got four A73 cores up to 2 GHz and four A53 cores up to 1.8. For the GPU, we've got the Adreno 610 up to 950 MHz, 4GB of LP DDR4X RAM, 64GB of internal storage, plus remember we can actually use a micro SD card slot or one of those USB 3 ports on the side. It's got AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.2, and it's running Android 10 out of the box. Now we can root this very easily and we can install a custom recovery. Okay, so first things first, when I booted this up, didn't look anything like we have right now. It basically just has a tablet Android interface, just kind of bare bones. But what I've done here is install Computer Launcher. I've tested a few others like Lawn Chair. You could also go with Nova Launcher if you want to. But I really do like this uh, kind of computer style here. We've got the USB ports for mouse and keyboard. Really nice navigation here with Computer Launcher. It is free over on Google Play. It's really up to you. You can go with any kind you want, but uh, this is what I'm going with for this video here. Overall, we've got a pretty snappy little system here. We're only working with that Snapdragon 665. It's nowhere near an 888, but a lot of these Android mini PCs usually have something like a rock chip. To see a Qualcomm chip or a Snapdragon chip here is still pretty awesome in my opinion. Android 10, and uh, we can install TWRP. There's a flash file over on their forum. So you can get through here and basically install anything you'd like. What I've done is set up Google Play, and I've got it somewhere. It does have AC Wi-Fi. Everything loads up pretty quickly, but if you wanted to use Ethernet, we've got it around back. You could set up dual displays on this if you want to, given that we have two HDMI ports. But uh, I mean, just with a single display here, not bad. I've actually got a lot of stuff installed. And uh, back button is actually gonna be your right mouse button, or you could use a keyboard. One thing that I actually like to do is just use a controller overall with these little Android setups. That way we've got the back button, home button, and everything like that. But as you can see, I have installed a bunch of stuff. And the first thing I wanted to test out was some video playback from YouTube. And we'll just go with, let's do Spring from Blender. It's an open movie. And I don't think that this is a 4K movie. But with the 665, 1080 should be more than playable here. Actually, let's get ahead a bit. Very smooth 1080p playback from YouTube, but unfortunately, wide vine level here is level three. So you're gonna be stuck with standard definition content from HBO, Hulu, and Netflix. It would have been really nice if this was wide vine certified level one, but you know, this is kind of how it goes with a lot of these Android boxes out there. But if you wanted to do native playback from internal storage or external storage, and even YouTube, we can go to HD with it, and it's gonna handle it quite well. And of course, you know we're going to be testing out some native Android gaming here. Let's start off light with Minecraft. 
So in the past, I have tested the Snapdragon 665 in lower end tier Android phones. Motorola actually used a lot of them in their Moto G series that you can pick up, you know, prepaid phones with. And I've actually had pretty good luck with it when it comes to gaming and emulation. Again, it's not a top of the line chip, but there's a lot of stuff that we can get out of the way. Minecraft here, we're at 12 chunks, fancy graphics is on, and it's running great. A lot of the indie games from Google Play are going to run just fine, like Dead Cells, you want to do some Stardew Valley, not a problem with those 2D games, but I just kind of want to throw some 3D stuff at it. Asphalt 9 is one of those games that's always near the top on Google Play, so I just went ahead and downloaded this. Not too bad. Now, I didn't change any of the graphic settings, it's just kind of at stock and I'm pretty sure we're kind of at the lowest, but it does look pretty good. We are at a 1080p resolution on this display here. And right now, I am using a keyboard. I was also using a keyboard with Minecraft, but keep in mind, you can connect an Xbox controller to this, either wireless, using Bluetooth, or you could just plug it directly in. It's really up to you. And the final native Android game we're going to be testing here is Call of Duty Mobile. We've got the graphics quality set to medium and the frame rate set to medium. I think we're at about 45 FPS. At low, this should run at 60. Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth works really well with this game, and uh, you can have a pretty good time with Call of Duty Mobile on this, but Genshin Impact is really going to struggle on a system like this with the Snapdragon 665. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation, and unfortunately I lost sound with Mupin64 plus FZ, at least with this game. I also tested out 007. N64 is going to run really decently on this system here, but uh, really weird that I lost sound with this emulator. Not exactly sure what's going on, but let's go ahead and take it up just a bit. Here we have some Dreamcast using the Redream emulator, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and if you wanted to go with Flycast, you could run it just fine. But uh, this is the one that I prefer using. FPS up in the top left hand corner. I tested a few games here and they all ran at 60. Not a problem for Dreamcast. And finally, for emulation, we've got some PSP. Chains of Olympus, we're at 1x resolution, Vulcan back in, and at 2x I did have some dips into the mid-50s, but other easier to emulate games can go up to 3 and even 4x depending on what you're running. By the way, we're using the PPSSPP standalone PSP emulator, and it's really not that bad. This is one of those games, you know, that really struggles on lower end hardware, even at 1x, so it's really great to see that we can actually run this at full speed. And before I wrap this video up, there's one last thing I wanted to test out here. Now, I know some of you aren't into, you know, cloud gaming, but it can come in really handy for a lot of people out there. And unfortunately, we don't have Wi-Fi 6, but we have Ethernet and Wi-Fi 5. I figured we'd get in here and just see how it performs. I am using AC Wi-Fi right now. I didn't plug in Ethernet. We'll go with Forza Horizon 5. If you're familiar with cloud gaming at all, you know it can be really hit or miss. Uh, with Xbox Cloud Streaming, you can see that the graphics quality has been degraded because we're streaming from servers that are possibly hundreds or thousands of miles away from me right now. But input latency isn't that bad, I definitely have some of it, and again, I am using Wi-Fi. If I was plugged into Ethernet, would be a little better here, and uh, I would highly suggest using Ethernet on something that has it. But a lot of people just don't have access to that cord, so I wanted to test over Wi-Fi. And yeah, it is playable. So overall, actually been having a pretty decent time with this. Would have been nice to have a more powerful chip, but that uh, Snapdragon 665 can definitely hold its own, even though it is showing its age right now. Getting the interface to look like this does take a little bit of work. All you really need to do is install a launcher. You can do it from USB, or if you want to go through the trouble and install TWRP and Google Play, it's totally possible on the Azul Ally. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If there's anything else you want to see running on this little machine, definitely let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't mind testing out some more games and even some emulators. We could try to go up to GameCube, but I'm not sure how well it's going to handle it. I just wanted to kind of show off stuff that really worked well on it right now. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the Ally, I will leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.